Hi, my name is Mike Hodgetts from Delving Designs, and in this Blender tutorial, we're going to look at how to create this node group for distributing the exact number of points that we want onto a mesh. Whatever we type in here, that's the number of points that we're going to see on our spreadsheet that are perfectly randomly distributed. Uh, the difference between this and the normal distribute points on faces node, if I view this, is that there is a, a difference between the density and the number of points that we get. And sometimes, whilst this can be, you know, you can just dial it in on times, it can be quite difficult to get the exact number of points that you might want. Um, and so that's what we're going to do by creating this node group here. So let's start a new file. So let's delete everything and we're going to add in a Suzanne monkey um, to distribute our points on. Let's go to geometry nodes, click new, and I'm going to add a reroute node um, and just control G to add that into a group. Now I can select this and with control X, I can just delete it. Scale these up a bit and let's name our inputs. So, so the this is going to be points coming out and in we're going to have a mesh. Now if we look at the distribute points on faces node and add that here, what this is actually doing is saying that for every square meter of every face add this many points. So you can see that like if I start scaling this up this number is not linear. So if I scale it by 2 we go from 125 to 500. If I scale it by five, we go from 120 to 3,000. So depending on the size of your mesh, um, this might not be very helpful and you'll want a way to control this. So that's what we're going to do. Um, as I said, undo that. Let's add that group input back in that I accidentally just deleted. There we go. Um, as I said, there's a relationship between the number of faces and the size of those faces and then the number of points. So what we can do is, using those attributes that we know, we can do some maths to figure out what the density is roughly going to be, and then we can delete anyone, uh, any extra points afterwards. So first of all, we want to find out how many faces there are. And if we use the domain size node, that gives us a really nice thing. We can find out how many points, edges, or faces, or face corners there are in a mesh. We can also find out how many instances we have in, say, a uh, collection. So let's go back to mesh. And we're going to want our face count. We also wanted to find the area because that's what this de density is working off of. So we can do that with an attribute statistic node. And we're going to want a float because it's going to be an area on the face domain because areas are obviously faces. Type in area into the attribute. Let's duplicate our group input. And let's add a new input, let's make this an integer, and we're going to rename this as number of points. Uh, let's actually tab out of our group and hook this up to our um, outside group as well. So we've got the value here. Ooh, I accidentally just deleted my geometry nodes, didn't want to do that. Let's add geometry nodes modifier back in and add that back on. There we go. Let's go back into our group. So what we want to do is we're going to take our number of points. We're going to divide by the number of faces. And then we're going to divide that by the mean, so the average area of the faces. And if we just press Control H, we can collapse our nodes just to make this a little bit easier. Let's full screen our node tree for the minute. Let's make this a little bit more readable. 
There we go. The next thing that we want to do for this is that, so at the moment, this is a number. If I just put, put this into my density as is at the moment and start typing in, so 10 gives us 12. So that's not too bad. 100 gives us 99. 1,000 gives us 1,027. So that's not too bad. 5,000. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I'm just going to add one more math node. And I am going to run it through what's called a ceiling, which is just going to round it up to the nearest integer. Um, because I want to make sure that the number of points is great currently when it's going in here is greater than the number of points that I'm trying to generate. So let's just let's frame all this up with Control J, and we're just going to call this. Um, density calculation. The next thing that we want to do is on our group inputs, let's add in um, the selection and seed values to our group input because we basically want this node group to replicate the distribute points on faces including the normal and rotation outputs, which we're going to come to in a second. So let's add these onto our group inputs. So for the normal and the rotation, we could just plug them straight into our group output, but we're going to be doing some uh, further stuff um, after here, which will completely mess up the indexes of these. So instead, what I'm going to do is actually store these as attributes on the point domain. So I'm going to store them as a vector. I'm going to call this one, top caps lock off, point normal. And it's going to be the normal. Duplicate another one. This is going to be point rotation. We can just hook these up. So now what we want to do is to delete the extra vertices that have been generated. So to do this, we can just add delete geometry. So obviously that's going to delete everything. We want to take our group input. Let's control H to unhide it. We want to take our number of points greater than or equal to. We need to flip this round and add the index. So we're looking at whether or not the index, so the number, effectively, the number of points that we currently have is greater than or equal to the number of points that we want. So if it is, we can just delete them. So now we have the correct number. You will, however, though, start to see a problem especially when we use really big numbers. Um, and let's actually just set the point radius so that we can maybe see this a little bit better. Let's subdivide it and apply that. Bit difficult to see on the Suzanne monkey. Um, but the issue that if we go and delete this mesh and maybe change it to a UV sphere, we might see it a little bit better. Let's add 50,000 points. So this is actually working pretty well. Um, the issue that you might arise, and it's a bit difficult to see on times with these, let's add 100,000. is that, and I say it's a bit difficult to see on here, but what, what can happen sometimes is that when you're deleting geometry from an index, the indexes are running in a sequential manner. So in fact, let's drop this down to say 50. Here we go. You can see it a bit better here. That 
we can see there's this like slice that's being taken out and that's because our indexes if i view them here is that you know this is maybe zero this is one this is two this is three four and so on and it's going you know all the way around and up and over and because they are sequential um what's happening is when you're deleting them they are being deleted in a sequential order which can lead to this sort of uh, banding effect where you've got this slice being cut out so what we're going to do is actually shuffle these indexes or randomize the indexes um, the way that i've seen people do this previously is by using the the random value node um, but that's not entirely correct because part of the problem with it is that the random value node randomization in cg or in like mathematics is never purely is never really random um, and so you end up with indexes that are duplicated uh, which isn't exactly what we want so what we're going to do is we're actually going to shuffle them similar to how you might shuffle a deck of cards and to do this really simple we're going to take our geometry uh, in between our attributes and our delete geometry we're going to separate the geometry we're going to join the selection and the inverted back up and our selection this is now going to be a random value but it's going to be a probability so we're now taking 50 percent right a random 50 percent of our points we're splitting them and then we're joining them back together and what that's doing is it's basically taking half of these indexes and dumping them to the bottom so if i view this on the viewer node nothing changes visually but if you look at the position data of the spreadsheet all of these positions are now getting updated so we can actually chuck this into a group as well with control g let's hook this up here and rename our inputs again it's going to be points and we're just going to add the seed to the input we can name this as shuffle that's what I was looking for thinking shuffle index we can now just join the like uh, join these together and do a, do it a couple of times just change the seed on each one and now you'll see that gets rid of that banding issue finally um let's add our point radius onto our group inputs radius and then the final thing that we want to do is to add these attributes to the outputs so that we can access them outside of the group so off of here just going to add a new named attribute it's going to be a vector and i'm just going to copy this name paste it here duplicate it copy the rotation and then i can hook these up to here and in my outputs i can name this one as normal and this one as rotation so let's just frame these up a little bit and make this a bit more neater so this one is going to be our um, distribute points these are our shuffle indices this is going to be our clamp points and then we've got our set point radius which we can leave i will leave this node tree just on the screen for a second if you do want to take a screenshot of it um, to be able to replicate yourself and now if 
we go back out of here, name our group, distribute exact points. We now have a node that we can append into any other project that we might be using. And we can now set the exact number of points. And this is, isn't going to change whether we scale our mesh up, scale our mesh way down. It's going to be the exact same number of points regardless. So yeah, I hope that was useful for you. Um, if you liked this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.